Next up, we have Carbiotics working in the field of microbiome healthcare. And here to present the company is CEO Christopher Cook. The floor is yours, Christopher. Thank you so much. Uh, Christopher Cook is my name, CEO of Carbiotics. We're a company that's focusing on pioneering microbiome healthcare through the use of smart prebiotics. Uh, we currently have a rights issue that will be running through the 2nd of June this year, and there we're raising in total 12 million Swedish crowns, uh, as well as a technical option in connection with this rights issue, where if fully subscribed, we'll raise an additional uh, 15 million crowns. Uh, this rights issue is 100% secured uh, through the management team, board, as well as external investors, and I myself will be investing uh, in excess of 2.5 million crowns. Uh, for more details, please uh, look at carbiotics.com uh, slash publications. So what is Carbiotics? Well, Carbiotics is an award-winning biotechnology company, as I said, pioneering microbiome healthcare, doing two things, prebiotic modulators and diagnostic testing services. Founded in 2014 as a spinoff from the Department of Biotechnology, uh, we're operating currently three types of labs, a development lab for prebiotics, a microbiology lab, as well as a diagnostic service lab. In addition, we have a pilot production facility located in Buf, and we're currently 10 employees. So what is this microbiome? Well, it's the bacteria, viruses, and fungi that, that are living on us, as well as in our gastrointestinal system. And why are they so important? Well, as infants, we're born with both a high diversity and number of probiotic bacteria. And these bacteria play a significant role, among other things, in blood sugar and cholesterol regulation, mineral absorption, as well as linked to the risk of developing many different chronic diseases uh, throughout life. And we know that around 70% of the immune system actually resides in the lining of this gut or, or gut tissue. Uh, we know as we go through life as well, both the number and the diversity of these bacteria go down, especially during states of disease. And we also know that prebiotics or indigestible carbohydrates are the food or main food source uh, for these probiotic bacteria. But we also know that 90% of adults today are lacking between 50 and 80% of the soluble fiber or prebiotics they should be consuming in their diets. And as I mentioned, the benefits of pre prebiotics are quite numerous, but what's more exciting is the area of utilizing pre prebiotics to increase the pharmacokinetics or how much active ingredient uh, reaches the liver. And this is an area we're definitely exploring in carbiotics. There is, however, a problem that the current generation of prebiotics have tolerance and efficacy issues. So what have we done? Well, we launched what we consider a superior product and companion diagnostic service. Uh, we've developed a prebiotic family called Carbiaxis derived from different cereals uh, such as oats and corn as well as pea fiber as well. And this is up to 10 times more effective due to its complex structure. Now this product can be used both in nutraceuticals and cosmetic applications alone blended or in what we consider a co-intervention with medical foods and therapeutics. Now to validate this particular product or the effect, we've launched a service called LinkGut. And today it's the most effective, reliable, and flexible B2B microbiome test on the market. And when you combine CarbiAxis with LinkGut, you have the smart prebiotic concept. Uh, CarbiAxis will be sold exclusively to companies in the form of an ingredient. So we are a B2B company. And once approved, it will be priced at a premium given its complex structure. So essentially what we're getting paid for is the effect that we can deliver to the customers of our customers. Now, Linked Gut Today is sold as an effective B2B microbiome testing service, and that's done to wellness companies as well as health specialists, as well as suppliers of supplements and cosmetics. So how big is the market, the total addressable market? Well, the market we're targeting is in excess of 1 billion euros today, and we're targeting a 75% gross margin plus, actually. And the first market we're going to be targeting is the U.S. market once we have grass approval, followed by the rest of the world, and then eventually uh, Europe once Novel Foods is in place in 2025. Saying this, we think that the, the TAM or total addressable market can be upwards of 5x or five times with the introduction of symbiotic applications. That's combining the prebiotic with probiotics. In terms of the microbiome testing market, we're looking at a, a total addressable market of around 100 million today. But if we leverage the infrastructure and the the testing service we provide today for clinical and research applications, that market is potentially 10 times more.
In terms of key persons in the company, uh, myself, CEO of the company since its founding in 2014, the suggestion or proposal right now is that I'll move over to chairman at the AGM on the 2nd of June. And Eric Diener, who I hired as head of sales and moved into the position of COO, will take over the position of CEO in the company. We also have two individuals who will be departing uh, the board and two individuals who've uh, been recruited to replace uh, Jonas Donnesson and P Dr. Peter Felt. There have, we have uh, Geir Herstad as well as Jürgen Kampf. And both those individuals have been uh, recruited to bolster or really bring up uh, our ability to work with both sales and business development in the company. So in terms of the, the use of proceeds uh, from the rights issue, as well as the technical option in 2023 and 24, as well as key milestones, within the car by access area, we'll be upgrading our current site with both nanofiltration, ultrafiltration, and spray drying capacities. And there the purpose is to be able to produce these high-end products based on, as I mentioned earlier, corn, wheat, as well as pea fiber. And there we have two recently communicated uh, partnerships is the best way to explain it. Uh, one with Aventure and the other one with uh, Green Dairy. In this case, focusing on oat, and obviously there are other producers of non-dairy oat milk <laughs> that, that are out there. Uh, what we also want to do with this scale-up of our second-generation uh, process, which produces essentially twice as much yield as our first-generation process, is to produce many, many different types of samples, both nutraceutical as well as cosmetic and they'll be used both for formulation activities uh, with customers as well as academic studies as well. So we want to start building up this uh, research and, and study database demonstrating the efficacy of our car by access product. On the regulatory side, we want to get grass self-affirmation for at least one nutraceutical product. And I say one there because there's a potential certainly to go beyond that and ramp up uh, sales as well through one or more partners. And again, that's part of our expansion strategy to build up our own production capacity as, as well as work with uh, external partners. We want to do the same thing for our cosmetic products or ingredients. And there we want to start sales from Sweden. So starting to initiate sales, uh, grow the production capacity in Sweden and have those sales um, internationally from Sweden as well. Uh, additionally, we want to make uh, strides in terms of novel foods. Uh, so get feedback from this initial working group so we can meet our objective of getting novel foods in place by 2025. On the study side, uh, we're soon going to be completing our initial metformin study used in conjunction with uh, CarbiAxis. And there we've given, been given already a green light to submit a more comprehensive or extensive application to get upwards of two and a half million euros in funding to do an extended study. So our initial study was roughly 50 to 100 individuals. And now we want to get into a study where we have several hundred individuals and start including key partners in the supply chain. So pharmaceutical company, uh, larger ingredient companies, and really build this out to a, a more comprehensive study. Additionally, uh, the idea is that we're, we'll be producing a, a much more efficacious carbioxis product in this particular study. And the last a point under at least car by access related activities is we want to submit this first patent application for advanced symbiotic products. And we recently communicated a partnership with one of the top 10 probiotics companies in the world to develop symbiotic products. And we believe that this is a launching pad for this particular application, which could increase our total addressable market by as much as uh, 5X, which I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, at the same time, we want to extend our link gut sales and partner network globally. We see this as a, as a core uh, cornerstone to our business as we integrate both the modulator as well as the diagnostic service to form this smart prebiotic concept. And last but not least, obviously, we have cost in connection with uh, the rent of our production facilities, our development facilities, and our, and our service provisions facilities on the diagnostic side as well. And with that, I certainly welcome questions. Thank you so much, Christopher, for that very interesting presentation. Uh, I'd like to start by talking about this collaboration agreement that you recently signed with this uh, top 10 global player. Mm. Um, first of all, what are symbiotics? I'd like to uh, ask you that question first. 
Well, you probably have to take a step back. Uh, we know that um, most people know what probiotics are because they're found in many different supplements and yogurts and, and other products on the market today. And probiotics are the, the, the bacteria themselves and they're measured in, in counts. Um, <clears throat> we know that what prebiotics are because we're working with prebiotics. So it's the food for the probiotic bacteria. Now, what you can do is combine both the probiotic, so the external bacteria, as well as the food which we produce, and together they form a, a symbiotic. Now, the benefit of the symbiotic is that you're introducing both the bacteria, which could establish itself either on an epidermal layer or in the GI system, as well as the food hmm. for that. So uh, the, in theory, the idea is, is, is that you get a better establishment of this particular bacteria, which may be lacking in, for example, individuals suffering from a specific disease or indication area. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, um, in terms of the collaboration agreement itself, could you go into a little bit more detail about this, uh, this agreement? I guess you can't really say who this global player is. No, uh, no, we're, we're extremely happy with this agreement because it is a top 10 company. Mm -hmm. And I, my personal belief, it'll be an impetus for you know, other companies in the space to also um, become aware of the work we're doing, both in terms of our, our prebiotics, but also the diagnostic service, which you know, together form the smart prebiotic concept, or yeah, it is a smart prebiotic concept. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, it's a company that obviously is in the consumer product space, and uh, they have the ambition of developing these symbiotic products uh, across different categories. Uh, and of course, you know, we're, we have to respect the anonymity, uh, request of, of this company. And we'll do that with any company that, uh, uh, expresses an interest to do so. And that's for competitive reasons as well. Sure. So we're very excited about this. Uh, it allows us to, uh, validate our customization model for a probiotics company, which is great. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we continue to do that for different companies out there. And, uh, yeah, this is great. You know, uh, we're also going to be adding, a an individual in our microbiology um, team as well to, you know, to support this as we build out that capacity in the company. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, carbiotics seems to be in a transition phase, you could say, with some changes in management, mm -hmm. board of directors that you mentioned. Yeah. You'll be stepping down from your role as CEO and uh, become chairman of the board. Oh. Um, well, first of all, how, how is that going to feel for you, stepping down from this role as CEO and becoming chairman? I've been CEO since the, the founding of the company back in 2014. Uh, since that time, I've obviously built up a, a lot of knowledge uh, in this particular industry or, or branch, uh, a lot of contacts. And uh, that's my intention right now is, is to, to be a working chairman. Uh, obviously, having a, a highly functional board is something that I think any company should have. And uh, in our case, I wanted to... Uh, certainly ensure that by bringing in key uh, board members who would support a focus on sales and business development right now as we enter this phase. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working with this a long time now. So, you know, eight years of developing a, a new ingredient is not a short period of time. Uh, so I certainly wanted to make sure that as we transition into this much more intense commercial phase, uh, that we have the right board uh, to support that. And my expectations on the board are quite high as well. Uh, you know, this is not, you know, four meetings a year. This is us working together, for example, on a monthly basis, at least with key members, and then having a very intense follow-up and uh, getting the support, uh, that can be provided through that facility. And then for myself, uh, n n fundamentally no big difference. I'll be leveraging that experience that I have to, uh, to, to focus on, uh, uh, sales and business development that's across the board. So with prebiotics companies, with probiotics companies, uh, with cosmetics companies. And then uh, my ambition as well is to uh, consolidate a, a, a partnership with a, uh, a leading company in the supply chain as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's my ambition for this period. And, uh, and obviously that will be there uh, to strengthen our ability across the board when it comes to you know, manufacturing and sales and R&D and uh, legal IP, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it's fundamentally necessary to, f to find those types of collaborations out there. And finally, uh, as you go through this trans transition, uh, what will be the top challenge for the new incoming CEO? Uh, well, well, it, it, there's always an adaptation period, obviously. Um, um, 
nothing fundamentally is going to change. You know, I will be there uh, in person uh, supporting Eric in his role. Uh, he comes from a sales background, mm -hmm. uh, which I think any, any good uh, CEO should come from. Uh, the ability to build relationships with different clients is fundamental for success in the business world. Uh, and obviously, there are a lot of practical issues in admin in connection with being CEO, and I'm there to support him during that transition as well. Uh, so my focus will be obviously working with business development sales and supporting Eric in landing in, in this new position as well. So I have no question whether he will, uh, if he will be successful or not. I think that he will be successful simply because of the fact that that he has the potential to be successful. He's demonstrated success previously and, and certainly I'll have the support of myself as well as the board as well. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Christopher, for answering these questions and for your presentation. And uh, we do hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here.